the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Would any children who are going to children's liturgy please come to the front of the church? My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to all my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For the waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, 
Do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord, Jesus Christ? For if a man with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor man in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Returning from the region of Tyre, Jesus went by a way of Sidon toward the Sea of the Galilee. In the region of the Decapolis, they brought to him a man who was deaf and who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd and put his finger into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue, then looked up to heaven and sighed and said to him, Ephodah, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, say, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. As Catholics, we belong to a sacramental church, which is to say more than simply we belong to a church that has sacraments. 
although that is where most of us probably begin and, sadly, where an awful lot of us end. We're a church that has sacraments. We have seven sacraments. Hopefully most of us know that. And that's it. But it doesn't really explain what a sacramental church actually is. You see, to understand us as a sacramental church, we have to take our sacramental theology a few steps back. Instead of just beginning with, there are seven sacraments, or even instead of just beginning with the definition of a sacrament, we have to begin with Jesus himself. For if the definition of a sacrament is an outward sign that gives grace, then Jesus is the very definition of the sacrament. He is, as the Eastern Church would put on, the icon of the Father. Or as we in the West would say, he is the foundational and the primordial sacrament. The image, the living image of the Father's love. In the very person of Jesus Christ, in his humanity and in his divinity, the Father shares his very life with us. For that is indeed exactly what grace is. God sharing that inner dynamic of the Trinity, his inner life, with us. And then we take it a step further. We look at the church. That church intended by and established by, in all of its essentials, by Jesus Christ himself. And so the church, much more than just being a place where we come to pray or a vague community of believers, the church is in fact the sacrament of Christ's presence among us. It is that outward sign we can see the church. It is visible, tangible people instituted by Christ himself. He founded this church, as I said, in all of its essentials and gave it the mission to give grace. So in essence, what we believe then as Catholics about being a sacramental church is that we believe that what Jesus did in his human body, when he walked this earth 2,000 years ago, he continues to do today through his mystical body, the church. He continues to share the Father's love, to share that inner life of the Trinity with us through his church, through her very presence among us, through the continuation of his church, which sanctifies men and women in every preceding generation, through the church's continuation of the preaching of the word of God, which Jesus himself did, the word proclaimed the word. And now the mystical body of that word incarnate continues to proclaim the word of God. But most of all, the church, like Jesus himself, shares that divine life with us when she celebrates the sacraments. Those sacraments, those outward visible signs instituted by Christ himself to give grace. And today's gospel gives us a wonderful example of the working of the sacraments. St. Mark recounts to us that some people brought to Jesus a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. Our life of grace seldom begins on our own. It always takes other people in one way or another. Generally, for the vast majority of us here today, it took our parents bringing us to the baptismal font, where that life of grace begins in the waters of baptism. 
In others, it took other ways, but always there would be an element of other people being involved. And indeed, that continues to be true of the sacraments, for every sacrament is not just a private matter. Every sacrament is a public act of the Church, a public act of Christ continuing to minister today as he once did then. No matter how private the celebration may seem, a sacrament is never a private thing. Sadly, so many of our sacraments do end up being exactly that. You know, how many times do I have people ask me, well, we want a private baptism. I'll do it, but it's not ideal. Because it's ideal for the community, the people of God, to be here to welcome a new member of the people of God. For the mystical body to be not just spiritually but physically present to welcome a new member of that mystical body. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick, sadly all too often, is me and the sick person lying in the bed. That does not for one moment take away from its validity, from its uh, lyseity, or even from its efficacy. But it does diminish the, the, the public aspect of the church being present. So sacraments are public. They involve the whole church. Every sacrament involves the whole church because we are all part of one mystical body. Then St. Mark goes on. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd. Now, that would seem to lay lie to everything that I just said about the sacraments being public. You know, Jesus takes this person away from the crowd. He wants this to be a private matter. And it would belie everything that I just said if it weren't for the fact that the Catholic or, but always both and. And so while the sacrament are all public celebrations of the people of God, of the mystical body of Christ. It is also equally true that each and every sacrament is also a very intense and a very intimate personal encounter between the baptized Christian and Christ. While Christ gives his grace lavishly and upon all who would have it, the imparting of that grace is also an intensely personal thing between each and every one of us and Christ. While its effect, the sacraments' effects will always manifest themselves very publicly, they begin with that personal encounter with Christ. That kind of encounter that each and every one of us are about to have in just a few moments with Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist so that we can go back out and be members of his mystical body for a world very much in need. St. Mark continues, once Jesus took him aside, he put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Now, Jesus could very easily have just snapped his finger and poof, the man would have been healed. With one thought of Christ, every deaf mute in the world could have been healed. But that is not the way that Jesus desired to do so. He desired to reach out and touch this man. Elsewhere in the Gospel, we're familiar with the story of Jesus making a, mud, a paste out of some mud and smearing it over the eyes of the man born blind. Time and again, he reaches out and he touches people. He dines with them. He uses ordinary things, especially bread and wine, to communicate himself to his people. In that, he gives the church not just example, but also command. The church's sacraments are not ideas. Our faith is not just an intellectual exercise, but a physical, tangible reality. And so in the wisdom of Christ and in the wisdom of the church, 
we too continue to use ordinary things. Water, oil, bread, wine, touch, the voice, people. This becomes the matter of the sacraments. We continue to do just as Jesus did. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. The definition of a sacrament is not just an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. That leaves out an important word. It is an outward and visible efficacious sign instituted by Christ to give grace. Efficacious, that means that the sacraments don't just signify something, but they effect or they bring about that which they signify. This deaf man did not hear until Jesus had touched his ears and said, be open. Jesus wasn't just celebrating something that was already a reality. He made this thing a reality. At the Last Supper, Jesus was not just sitting there sharing himself with the apostles in a way that had already happened, but rather by taking bread and wine, making them the body and blood of himself, and saying, do this in memory of me, Jesus brought into, into existence the sacrament of the Eucharist, which we continue to effect at each and every Mass. Marriage does not just celebrate love between a man and a woman. It takes two and makes them one in the sacrament of matrimony. Baptism does not just celebrate that this little baby is a wonderful child of God. It makes this baby a child of God, an heir to the kingdom, a brother or sister of Christ, and a member of Christ's mystical body. Each of the sacraments effect that which they signify. They're not just nice celebrations. They are the very power of God, sharing his life, grace, with us today. And St. Mark says to us, they were astounded beyond measure, saying he has done everything Dear friends, that is not just a statement about something that happened 2,000 years ago somewhere in the Decapolis. That is a statement about what Christ continues to do each and every day through his mystical body, the Church. He continues to do all things well. When the Church baptizes, it is Christ who baptizes, Christ who gives new life. When the Church forgives sins through her priests, it is Christ working through his priest who reconciles a sinner to the Father, who takes someone bound for hell and reorients him to heaven. When the Church confirms, it is Christ who sends the Holy Spirit upon his people, just as he sent that same Spirit upon the apostles at Pentecost. When the church heals in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, whether body or spirit, it is Christ who heals. And we could do the same through each and every one of the sacraments, for the sacraments are not our doing, they are Christ's doing, they are Christ working through his mystical body right here and right now, doing all things well. Are we amazed? Are we amazed, just like these people were at the healing of the man born deaf? If we aren't, and I dare say a good many of us aren't, it's probably because we have allowed the sacraments to become ordinary when they are in fact extraordinary. Because we need to learn more for one, 
and more than learning intellectually, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to allow us to be able to stand in wonder and awe before the great mystery of Christ, the sacrament of the Father, who gives us his church, the sacrament of him, who through her sacraments continues to work marvels among us. May God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon our Lord, our refuge and strength in every age, and offer these prayers for ourselves and for all who are in need. That in his concern for his holy people, God will raise up many more men and women to serve the church in the priesthood and consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the wisdom of God will fill the hearts and minds of all in public office, that they will seek to promote the common good and respect the rights and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who serve in Catholic education may be filled with the courage to remain faithful to the gospel in the face of a society increasingly at odds with the truth of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all God's people, especially those who suffer from poverty, oppression, or warfare, will know the peace that only Christ can give. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace and reconciliation will prevail among all people, especially in the Holy Land and in the Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God's abundant goodness be poured out upon those who are sick or suffering, whether in body, mind, or soul, especially our suffering parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, will welcome our deceased loved ones into their everlasting home, especially our deceased parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us offer our prayers to Almighty God 
through the intercession of our Blessed Lady, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our the offertory hymn is number 625, God Created Earth and Heaven, 625.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Douglas our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 570, Gift of Finest Wheat, 570.
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and the heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. couple of announcements today. Uh, first of all, a uh, number of welcomes or welcome backs. A uh, number of, uh, of new faces this morning. So if you're a visitor, welcome to the Basilica of Our Lady. Uh, if you're new to the parish, welcome also. Uh, welcome or welcome back to uh, our students who I see a number of the students here this morning. We're very glad to have you with us. And a big welcome back to the choir, who are uh, finished their summer hiatus and are back at it uh, in earnest now. Good to have you back. Got to share something with you. I had a delightful experience when I opened up the church this morning. Today, the 8th of September, is in the Roman calendar the feast day of the birth of Our Lady. And uh, it gets trumped by the Sunday. But uh, someone had left a beautiful bouquet of flowers with a little card that said, Happy Birthday to the Queen of Heaven. And they're over by the Regina Chaley statue right now. I just thought that was absolutely delightful. You know, we bring flowers to our mom on her birthday. Why not to our Heavenly Mother as well? Here, however, we will transfer the liturgical celebration of the feast to tomorrow morning. Reminder that our parish picnic is at 1 o'clock this afternoon. You are all very welcome. There will still be tickets available at uh, St. Michael's School, and the tickets are $5 per person. Children under five are free. This Wednesday, the regular uh, Wednesday schedule begins. Morning prayer at 7 o'clock, Mass at 7.30, followed by perpetual help devotions. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament all Wednesday morning benediction at noon, and mass again at 12.15. Please see an important item in the bulletin uh, regarding the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, RCIA. Uh, they will begin September 25th. There is still time to register. Also, for any parents who uh, have children who are not in Catholic schools, please see the item in the bulletin about the religious education course which is run, as it has been for many years, at St. Joseph's, our neighboring parish. Uh, we'll no longer be using the correspondence courses. We're going to partner with St. Joseph's for their religious education class. Now, to a lot of people, theology and a pub are not things that would necessarily go together. But for a Catholic, they fit perfectly. And especially for our young adults, there is a uh, pub and theology uh, evening this coming Friday, September 13th, at the Innocente Brewing Company in Waterloo. The topic is the liturgy. I'm the presenter. How short or long, how good or bad the presentation is entirely depends on how generous those who are buying are. But uh, please do plan to come out. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Chaley Shrine burn in loving memory of John Betts and Kevin Coulter. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, in peace. Thank